Hi, intrepid viewers. Are you happy after the debate? Such a relief, isn't it? She did perform well, a bit nervous at the start, but she got into her stride. So it's thrilling to see someone give him a bit of a smack, isn't it? You know. Could have gone further. I was hurling a few suggestions at the screen. You know, you probably were too. But overall, she was prepared. He wasn't. And there you go. But one of the things, I think I've commented on this before, he never mentions the Republican Party. He's not a team player. He doesn't give a flying toss about the party or the voters for that reason. The, the weird thing is now, he's such a genuine narcissist. Yes, it's an overused term, but he embodies it. So people like Nikki Haley voters, he not only makes no attempt to woo them back, he disparages them. You know, So if you're not a Trumper from cradle to grave, you don't exist in his world. It's very weird and it, uh, it's only happening because he's not actually a political animal at all. He's just a failed businessman who stumbled into the biggest job in the world, yeah. thanks to The Apprentice. The producer of The Apprentice, I think his name's Burnett or somewhere, he has a lot to answer for because he's sitting on hundreds of hours of appalling Trump behaviour and sayings. But anyway, I digress. If you're new, this program has a lot of digressions. So let's focus here. Um, the first thing I want to talk about and have a look at, September 26th, Judge Chutkin um, has authorised that Jack Smith can read out, i.e. going on the public record, about... Trump's crimes in relation to this case. So there are things hopefully that we haven't heard that are juicy because now he's had two empanelled grand juries and he keeps a tight ship. There haven't been any leaks from either of them. So I want to have a look. What's the date today? I'm coming to you from the future. As you know, that's one of my special powers and it's already the 12th here. So, yeah, it's not that far away, but it's big as a development. Okay, let's have a look. Will the revelations, Jack Smith's revelations, move the dial? Can you believe anyone, anyone, is sitting on the fence in the USA now. I'm sorry. Talk about voter suppression. I'd say if you haven't made up your mind by now, don't bother. I mean, call me hardline, call me old school. But look at this. But speaking of another digression before I get going, uh, I know many of you who are Democrats in ruby red states call yourselves blue dots in a red sea. And now yard signs have started turning up in those states with a white background and a blue dot. Okay. The Judge Chutkin case, Jack Smith, what are we going to hear? Um, 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 okay. Now we're talking here about his superseding indictment and he's cut it down by nine pages or something. But from what I understand from the real legal eagles, is that it's, it's very tight because of that. He's had to try and identify and eliminate anything that could be questioned and go for immunity, so he's made it really streamlined. But here, this is a message, and it's a message about money and values. And so I think 
We're going to see some, I hadn't thought of this before, something about people actually being paid to subvert the election. If that is the case, that changes what they can potentially be charged with into full-blown conspiracy and stuff. I think there's going to be something about money. Look at this. Right? This is the trade-off. This is the compromise. Ooh. Many people are nervous. Well, not many enough, really. You should be nervous. nervous about this. Some of them, they would have been a mixed bag, some of these people, right, with election interference. Some would be just doing it from the heart and others would just be doing it because they can or whatever. And they're starting to get a bit freaked out because it's been four years. They've got away with this. And it's only now these other cases are coming in. Things are going to move more quickly. Once this is out there, things are going to move quickly. So in other words, the GOP um, are going to have to get on their horses and try and ride to the rescue. But not a minute too soon, Hierophant, here comes law and order. So this, what I hope, 26th of September, that's only like six weeks or less to the actual election, I'm hoping this stuff will freak out those who are planning to break the law because they think that the hysterical, weeping, sweating baboon is their guy. Oh, my God. He did lose it, didn't he? Oh, core. Okay. Now, the government shut down. Um, I think we have to keep an eye on that because that impacts both sides. It could look bad for Biden and Harris if the government is shut down when the country goes to an election. That would be a bad look. At the same time, we know whose fault it is, but are people on the ball enough to really realise the dynamics? So I'll do a little bit bigger read on this because I want to see how the GOP are going to handle this. This should definitely be something that's on the table in the year or two from now to actually stop this stupid fight for finances process. And the problem for the GOP is they have a very weak whip. What's his name? Tom Emmer or somebody? somebody? Well, herding cats doesn't cut it, does it? You know, you've got the Marjorie Taylor Greens and people. Let's have a look at the fight around the shutdown. So, oh. Okay. The fight around the shutdown. Oh, the emperor's turned up. Okay. Now, Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, Remember, he's the Republican who only watches porn so he can monitor what his son's watching. That's the best excuse I've heard ever. It's good, isn't it? Okay. So Biden and Trump have turned up in this. So in the centre is the Biden card. So that I think he'll do his best to steady the ship on unsteady waters there's a certain inevitability about this, right? You can assume there'll be a shutdown. Love to be wrong. It's sort of the time is of the essence. Hangman, it'll be held up, you know, duh. Nine of pentacles, this is people, everyday people, particularly federal employees, who risk not being paid and all of that, they want their life back. 
So there's going to be tension between the reason they're holding it up, which is just being bloody minded, as we would say in Australia, you know, just for the sake of it, versus their legal responsibility. We just had the Hierophant. We've got, you know, Capitol Hill. We've got the court system. We've got the churches. We've got everything going on here. But I think Trump is going to sabotage whatever the Congress comes up with. He's because this is his okay corral sort of moment, you know, and he doesn't understand politics as we've already established. So it starts with Biden and ends with Trump. So watch this space. I think there will be a shutdown. We'll keep track of this, whether there's a mini shutdown or whether it's more serious. So, guys, um, while I'm shuffling, I want to wish you all the best in terms of those of you who might be affected by hurricanes and fires. There's a lot going on with this tail end of summer, you know, so lots of love. Okay. Okay. So, and Taylor Swift, I'm a late in life Swifty, got to admire her. Oh, how amazing is that? It's just great. Because she's running a personal risk, of course, already dreadful things are happening um, in terms of pushback to her. So <clears throat> apparently... You, know, you remember the the story that's it's still breaking in a way. The media company, Tenor Media or whoever they are, the two people have been indicted for taking $10 million from Russia and paying their people, including Burns and different ones. And one of them has already come back to Taylor Swift saying, look out what happens when Venezuelan gangs get a pretty girl. I mean, really, how foul, how absolutely pathetic and awful is that? But she's up to it. She's a strong gal. Okay, now speaking of Russian money, oh, I'm going to move to the Russian cards. Because 10 million to Tenor Media and another 10 mil that um, someone has exposed that Trump received at some point, a direct bribe as opposed to all the others. And so it seems like for Putin, his number is 10 mil. So even though Russia is probably going broke, Generally, this is chicken feed. He could pay it out of his back pocket. This is chicken feed for um, big oligarchs. And he is one of the richest men in the world. But unlike Musk and the others, he doesn't talk about it because it would bring him undone politically. But he's phenomenally wealthy, which is what Navalny was trying to expose, right, the actual corruption of Putin and his henchmen. So with this, I want to look at will any of these um, cases of Russian money infiltrating the American media landscape and Trump's pocket, will that have any flesh on the bones or not, you know? So let's have a look at that. So... This includes so many people. And remember, and we must remember, the problem is in the modern political world, things that would bring down an administration, right, 20 years ago, don't even rate two days in the news cycle now. But one of those things, remember when all those GOP lawmakers went to Moscow on the 4th of July? I think that was Vladimir's little joke too. I'll see if I can lure them over here on the 4th of July. And they've never been the same since, right? 
suddenly they're very pro-Russia. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at this Russian money that keeps getting found in people's bank accounts and in the trunk of the car. Let's have a look at Russian money interference American election. Okay. Now, these Russian cards, very hard to track down. They come in this fabulous box with a key. Okay. All right, let's have a look at what's happening with Russian interference. No. No. Oh, this is interesting. I'll have to do some clarifiers on this. All right, in the middle, I think this represents Putin eight years ago, nine years ago, even 10 years ago, finger on the pulse, he just voted himself in to stay in forever, um, et cetera, et cetera. He was riding high on the hog. Back then, he was sleeping at night. Ah, imagine that. I don't think he slept for five years, but look, that was then. But it's sort of, if you look at it, because he is genuinely, clinically um, paranoid as well, notoriously. He's asleep with his clothes on even then, just in case you have to do a runner in the night. Okay, so in the past, I think this was whining and dining um, the people I've just been talking about, right, you know, wooing them over, making the plan, offering them things, would you like a trip to the Cayman Islands, you know, whatever he offered that apparently they would have accepted. But look at these two cards and why I have to do a clarify. Look, look at this. This is the legal system coming after this money. Look, the eagle swooping, the seagulls flying. And look at this. Look at this. Talk about being a shag on a rock. You know, this is sort of quite desperate stuff. But is it Putin or is it the Yeti? Putin or Yeti? Putin or Yeti? Clarifiers. Oh, look at this. Two decks of cards get the Hierophant in boat. If you can read it, the Hierophant followed by the Hierophant. What are the chances? 278s. What is that? 156. And... Taking time out. I actually think this is speaking of Putin. I'd like to think it was both, and symbolically it's it's both. This was Trump during the debate. <laughs> this is Trump after the debate. But I'm stretching it there. In terms of what the cards are saying, I think it's Putin. Okay. So now. You know how the thing, Trump always surrounds himself with loyalists as opposed to competence. Only the best people is a phrase that is code for only people who will love me, serve me and worship me. That's what it really means. Nothing to do with their abilities. So let's have a look at Lara. She's another Trump family member with the brain of a goldfish. So... And she's running this gigantic campaign. And her experience would be, I don't know, buying Jimmy Choo shoes, oh, Mahalo Blancos. That's the biggest thing she's had to think about until she got the job. So 
To make it more interesting, what do the GOP operatives think of Lara? Because you've spent 25 years clawing your way up the greasy pole of the Republican ticket, and then you get told that your boss is really Lara Trump. I mean, you wouldn't be happy, would you? Let's have a look. GOP think of Lara. Well, there you have it. It's a visual experience. You don't have to go much further. So she has this power now. I mean, the head of any political party or the head of the campaign is powerful. This is my card for the GOP. Fake families, right, pretending everything's fine and, you know, they wouldn't like the rainbow imagery, but there we have it. They want to move away from her because they know she's not up to it. And I think from this, she's freaked out. It's fine to be promoted up, 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 but at a point you actually realise your own little deluded um, version of yourself that thought you could handle something like this is very misplaced to say the least, I'll be kind, misplaced. I think they're not happy and I think she's unhappy. Let's just, I'm going to leave those cards. After the failed debate and the failed rallies, Kamala was good on the rallies, wasn't she? You know, that was great, saying people were exhausted and bored. Heads will roll after the debate because it's never him. Will Lara be sacked between now and the election? Will Lara be sacked between now by the father-in-law from hell? Will she be done before then? What's with the Hierophant? What is with the Hierophant? What I'm happy about, every spread's had the Hierophant, it is the social norms. The Hierophant represents the things that we in alleged democracies actually hold to be sacred and dear, the things that keep a society functioning, and it keeps turning up not a minute too soon, but we're talking overkill with the Hierophant. And I, I stick it back in the middle of the pack. I shuffle while I'm raving on. And here it comes for the third time, if not the fourth time. Will she be sacked? There's a distinct possibility, Ace of Pentacles here. This is also the card of false gold. Yeah. Uh, thought she was up to it. No, she isn't. If she gets sacked... You know what? He'll do it in secret because he's famous for never having the cajones to do anything significant himself. He always gets someone else. She'll be sacked by someone else on his behalf because he's too gutless to do it. He's happy to scream and shout and stamp his little yeti hooves, but he doesn't do anything face to face. And that was another good Kamala moment all round when she said you're not competing against Biden now you're competing against me and I think that was a bit of a to the very fragile yeti mind you he does have the constitution of a yeti too you know I mean considering his appalling diet and everything else it's a miracle he's got the 78 so let me just look here. I think we might finish on Kamala herself. Now, she must be relieved the debate's over. She must be relieved she performed well under the circumstances. It wasn't perfect. I think if it had gone another half an hour, not that I think it should be two hours or anything, but she was just getting into her stride. She was like, but what does she think now it's over? How's she feeling? Let's have a look here. 
Let's have a look. And before I get the up, remember, guys, particularly if you're in red states, I think it's Georgia that's just introduced a thing. You will need um, proof of citizenship to vote. That's your birth certificate or your passport. I don't know what else you have. Will, will a social security card be enough? I don't know. And you should find out and be really careful and make sure you dig out the birth certificate and stuff. Take nothing for granted with this election cycle. And there's talk that might be part of the government shutdown rules. They want to introduce that more broadly. Personally, I think it's astronomically stupid because it impacts both sides of the fence. In fact, you can make an argument sociologically to impact particularly rural GOP types and stuff more, but be alert to it. So, Kamala, how are you doing, love? How are you doing? What are you feeling? Oh, she did feel out in the cold. Now she doesn't. The burden's behind her. Oh, good. I think she was more freaked out than she let on at the beginning of that debate. This, this feeling, we're talking feelings here, could even go back to after the first debate and it was so dramatically awful and she must have... Her heart must have actually lurched. It's fine to be ambitious and do it, but that was so quick that I think she thought, I don't know if I've got the numbers. I don't know if enough people will support me. She actually likes and respects Joe Biden. I think this was quite a horrendous emotional time for her. But now, this is the wedding card, now she realises she actually has confidence that and she has an enormous natural charm that is now off the leash. Um, but she does have that. The burden is behind her, which isn't to say she hasn't got a lot of work to do because it's such a, a peculiar landscape. But technically, in terms of this spread, it's behind her. It's a 10. She's got to the top of the mountain. Now she's waiting for her ships to come in. That is, I think, referring to her people and what they have to do to make this a rock-solid, um, tremendously exciting campaign. And she's done her bit. The Democratic Convention was sensational and created energy and created interest and brought new people into the fold. She's waiting for those ships to come in, in terms of the vote, and her outcome and how she feels about the future is much more confident, confident, almost relaxed. I mean, look at these. She's worked, 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 worked to get where she is. And she deserves those pentacles, you know. Okay, how cool is that? All right then, possums. I'm off for now. And so I'll see you on the other side. Keep the comments rolling in. Go and find your birth certificate. And I'll see you next time. Big love. Ciao.